Hi everyone, this is Heather from WeddingsbyHeather.com. In this video, we are going to set up our Wacom preferences, but first, make sure you check out my free video series on managing your workflow. In order to access the Wacom tablet properties, first you'll need to install the driver that came with your tablet. And on a Windows machine, you'll need to click on the Start button, select All Programs, Wacom Tablet, and then Wacom Tablet Properties. I'm working on a Mac, so I'm in my System Preferences, and I'm just simply going to click the Wacom Tablet. One thing that I love about my Wacom tablet, and I love many things, is that it is very feature rich. And as such, we have a lot of options we need to cover. But first, if you are left-handed, you may want to go into the options and choose the left-handedness. And once you do that, you'll also wanna come in to the grip pen and mapping, and you might wanna choose the, uh, the express keys on the right. So I have my express keys on my left. I'm right-handed, but I use my left hand to choose the express keys. So I would imagine that if you're left-handed, that would be the opposite approach. So that's two things you wanna do if you use your left hand. And since we're here, why don't we look at the mapping of our tablet to our screen, and it gives you a pretty good visual of what that looks like, but you could also choose a portion of your screen, one monitor versus two monitors. You could choose, and there is where you could set that. You could also choose um, your tablet, just use a portion of your tablet or the full. I use my main large monitor, and I map the full tablet. The eraser is at the top of your stylus and you can make that do different things, which is really nice. So right now it's set to erase, but I'm gonna show you in a future video how you might want to program um, a keystroke for this function. Let's jump over to the pen itself. You can customize the tip feel. You can see I'm clicking on my screen right now on my tablet, excuse me, and it's showing up the current pressure so you can see what it's like if I hold and press, it goes to maximum. The double click distance is just how fast you double click the sensitivity. I also have the two buttons on my stylus programmed to right click and double click and I find that very handy because remember in most of these cases I'm not using a mouse and I still need that functionality. On the top of our screen let's go ahead and select functions and by the way I have an Intuos 4 Medium that's what shows up there. If you have a different tablet you should see the name of that tablet. Um, in the reason there's more is space is because you can add multiple tablets but for most of us we're only going to have one tablet. Okay we have some express keys, a touch ring, and a radial menu to explore, and they are wonderful. And if you are a keyboard shortcut fanatic like I am, then this is really fun. I enjoy investing time in my workflow and my efficiency by setting these up for the functions that I use most. These express keys are already set to commonly used functions. So for instance, that top express key where it says settings, if I press that key, this is what I'll see. And it will give me a really quick overview of everything that I have set. Let's say that you haven't used your tablet in a while or you might forget what, what button you assigned to where. If you press that button anywhere, then you can see really easily and quickly what you have assigned to those express keys. I don't wish to discuss how I use these keys in Lightroom and Photoshop right now. That's a separate video, but I just want you to be aware of where they're at and what you can do with them. If I click on the modifier, for instance, these are all the different things that I can access via these keys, and they, they were really handy, and I'll give you a few examples later. We have this touch ring. This is on um, most of the Intuos 4 and 5 tablets, and it also has different things that you can assign to it. There are four sections, so each one can be something different. I know you're thinking, wow, this is a lot, but when we get into Lightroom and Photoshop, it, it will make more sense how we can use this. And then we have our radial menu, and the best way to describe it is to just go ahead and show it. I'm gonna go back to the express keys and I notice that my second button, my second express key has been signed to the radial menu. So if I press that button, 
This is what the radial menu looks like. And then I can click on command and then I have all of these options. This is called a sub menu. If I press X, obviously it disappears. If I press it again, I can click on the www and it will send me over to my browser. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my settings. I can click on media and obviously if I'm playing some type of media, I can use these controls. That's also very handy. It has this email set up for a client. I don't use a client, I use Gmail, so that doesn't make any sense for me. But you can program all of these in this menu. <laughs> so if you wanna get really crazy, you can go into here and assign these certain keystrokes, or mouse modes, pen modes, obviously email, change settings, switch applications, um, anything that you would like it to do, which does come in really handy. Again, overwhelming at first, but once you start to map out your workflow and how you use different applications, you'll, you'll see how, where you can apply these. I hope that you found this useful. In the next video, we're going to begin adding applications and therefore changing how the express keys work using different functions in different applications. I'll see you then.